I want to think about not just this series, right, but any geometric series for which the limiting sum exists. Remember, just like some limits exist, some limiting sums don't exist. And we're going to dig into that in a second, right? So, generally speaking, how did we define the sum, the partial sum, right, of a series up to the nth term? How do we define it? For a GP? I'll give you a tip. It's a fraction. A? One minus R, R minus R And I could have that switched around if I want, which would mean I would switch around the denominator, which is one minus minus R. Okay. But as you'll see in a second, remember I said, you know, some series fit this format and other series fit the other format. You'll see pretty quickly why I'm ch I've chosen this format. Maybe you've already seen it. Now, what is what is S the limiting sum? It's not this. This is the partial sum, right? The limiting sum is. Good, right, so I'm going to take that limit. So let's go, limit as n approaches infinity of this must be the limit as n approaches infinity of that, right? Okay, now immediately you see, just like we saw with 1, 2, 4, 8, right, that this isn't always meaningful. You don't always get an answer for s, because if your ratio is 2, for instance, right, this term here, r to the n, it's going to blow up. It's going to give us that problem we had before, right? So we said we need some conditions on r. The ratio can only be certain things, right? So we said that the ratio has to be, it can't be 2, it can't be 1.5, it can't even be 1. It's got to be less than 1, right? So I say that, okay? Now, that's good. But it's not everything, right? Do you remember when we were having a look at geometric means? Geometric means. And I said, if I gave you this series, right, there's a number you can insert in there that will make that a GP, right? Do you remember that? What is the GM, GM of, of this particular sequence? Four. Minus, Minus four. four. Ah, now, <laughs> you remember that in fact, it is not just one value, it's two, right? Plus 4 will make that a, G a GP, that's the obvious one, but minus 4 is just as much of a GP. It has a, um, it has a common ratio of negative 2, yes? Now, let's just think about this for a second. Let's go for that unusual case. Um, what's the next term? Minus 16, and then the next term? 32, okay, so on. All right, now think with me for a second, briefly, about this example. It's not just, you know, for people who are trolling. It's actually very helpful for us. What are, what are the partial sums? What's going on here? What's the first partial sum? Two. two. What's the second partial sum? Minus two. Minus two. What's the third partial sum? Two. Six. 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 Oh, wait, yeah, sorry, six. six. Minus Fourth partial sum? Minus ten. Minus ten. Okay, now... Did I get it right? Yeah, minus 16. And then the fifth one, I guess, would be 22. Yeah. Now tell me, I had two categories for different series, right? Convergent ones and divergent ones. Which category is this? It's just, it's blowing up, isn't it? If I were to graph this, right? Yeah, um, 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 here we go. What would it look like? Uh, I'd go uh, 2 and then negative 2 and then 6 and then negative 10 and then 22. It's doing something like this. If there's anything that's diverging, that's diverging, okay? So therefore, r is less than 1. Well, sorry, is r less than negative 1 in this case? Sorry, is r less than 1 in this case? Yes. Yeah. It is, because negative 2 is less than 1, right? But it's blowing up. So I need to add something to this condition. It can't just be less than 1. It's also got to be greater than... It's... Now let's just oh, stop for a second. Zero. If it was zero, I think we're definitely safe. We're definitely safe, right? Um, you know, a tenth, a quarter, a fifth, whatever, they'll all be fine. They'll all be like this kind of series, right? But are the negative numbers completely ruled out? No, no not in the negative. Remember how um, I said before there was this alternating series I had, right? Because GPs can do this back and forth thing, right? Well, let's just look at this guy and imagine what would happen if we were alternating. Uh, this would be minus. I guess I'd get a, a minus 1 over 16 here. Okay. Now, if that were the case, come on, think with me. This is all about partial sums and what their limit is. Okay. So, first partial sum, the same. What's the second partial sum? Quarter. Quarter. What's the third partial sum? 
three eighths. Three eighths. What's the fourth one? Uh, this is a bit hard. Five, five, Take five, away six, a sixteen. Eight. It's um. Five sixteenths. Five sixteenths. Are these numbers converging to something? Wait, yeah. um, they're becoming smaller. <laughs> and then bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are they? Now, I'm, I'm going to leave this. I'm going to leave this for you for a second. You, you, we've done four values. We've done them by hand. Okay. I'll show you if you like. I didn't bring it with me, but maybe in period three. I'll bring my laptop. Spreadsheets are built for this kind of thing. We don't need to do this by hand, right? Is it like this? Yes. No. 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 Maybe if I do some decimals, that might help, right? Uh, this is 0 0.5. This is 0 0.25. This is 0 0.375. What's 5? I have no idea what this is. 0.3125. Converging. Is it converging to something? Oh, it's the other way around. It, like, it starts with a really big gap. Between them, and then it goes smaller. I told oh, you it was Okay, now, so I'll let you have a think about this. But, <laughs> suffice to say, for now, okay, actually... Oh, wrong color. <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll be fine. As GB says. Right? So long as you're between minus one and one, you'll be okay. Um, it will do. It will do what was suggested, right? You'll do this. Like that. Okay, you will still converge to something. Yep. Oh, it's not equal to zero. And uh, we we have already so it's kind of that trio result right which doesn't make a GP at all but because it makes it even messier than it already is most people leave it off. Okay. Now just one more thing. Um, there's a slightly ever so slightly more concise way to write this. Okay. Um, if r is between negative one and one, what we mean is that the size of r has to be less than one, the size of it. Because like the size of negative one, we still call the size of that one, like how far it is from the origin. Now we have another name for size, right? How big something is irrespective of its sign, irrespective of its sign, we call it absolute value, right? The absolute value of R. That's just how big am I? How far am I from the origin? I want that to be less than one. And that includes the negative one case, okay? So these two things, they mean the same thing. Okay. Now, by the way, just before I, I now move on, right? Do you see how much time we invested to think about this thing, right? We already talked about like when we we're solving logs and when we we're doing like differentiation and so on. Conditions, restrictions on domain or whatever, they're not an afterthought. They're not a, oh, by the way, just, just have a think about this. These things are crucial to this result. If these are true, then everything I'm about to say is completely ridiculous, right? The conditions really matter. The restrictions really matter. Now that I know what the restrictions are, I can do something with this thing, right? Let's think about it. As n approaches infinity, n only appears once in this term that I'm interested in, right? It only appears once. That r to the n term, okay? So now, if I can understand that r to the n term, then the whole thing collapses, right? So, let's think about it this way. The limit as n approaches infinity of just that guy, just that guy by himself, keeping in mind this condition, this condition, right? And clearly, if this is like, say, a half, like in our case, right? Uh, that's this case here, isn't it, right? As n approaches infinity, that thing is just going to vanish away. The limit exists, it's zero. Are you okay with that? No. So if r is a fraction of some kind, right, like a half oh, or a third or a quarter, okay. then this will be a half to the, you know, a hundred, a half yeah. to the thousand. It's going to vanish away, okay? So even, by the way, even if it's like 99 over a hundred, 99%, it will take a long time, but if I'm going to infinity, I have all the time in the world, I'll get to zero, okay? All right, so being that that part is zero, I, I can evaluate this now. I don't need to do any other fancy tricks. I have A, I have one take away, Zero. zero, what I just established, and one takeaway R. Are you okay with that? One takeaway zero is one. So now I have this little result here. Generally speaking, this is the same limiting sum that I got before, but it will give it to me not just for this series, but for any series that fits these conditions. Okay? Let's just quickly test it, make sure it works with the result that we got before. Okay. In the example, the interesting example we started with, what's the first term? What's A? It's a half. What am I dividing by? 
one minus a half, the common ratio. One minus a half. One minus a half, of course, is just a half. A half divided by a half, that had better be one. Okay, are you happy with that?